Hi everyone. Today we're working on kind of a version of the jelly roll rug. Everybody's made the oval rugs and the round rugs. Well today we're going to make a rail fence jelly roll rug. Now say that fast three times. <laughs> and I'll show you just a strip, just kind of a teaser of it. But this is so easy and fun to do. It's kind of mindless sewing. So this is one strip. It uh, can be made any size you like. You can make it as a rug. You can take, we're even going to take the scraps and make something. So let's get started on our jelly roll rug and I'll show you a couple little tricks that I've learned along the way. Uh, first of all, we're sewing on the beautiful Baby Lock Accomplish, which is just one of my favorites. It's known for its speed and efficiency. It will go through multiple layers. It makes our layers of our tubes just go through it like butter. So we will be using that. And we're also on the wonderful new uh, Koala Adjustable Height Center. And with just the touch of a button, I can bring it down to any level I want. So I think that's really cool. And it has extensions, it opens up. So lots of good things here in the store. So first we're gonna start out, you need a jelly roll and you need your batting. You can buy pre-cut two and a half inch strips you do need to trim those down just a little bit if you do that, or I have lots of scraps left over from my quilting projects and Sonia brings back the leftovers and I cut it into strips. So, batting and strips, it's all you need. And I'm going to show you, see I've got two so I can show you the very basic beginning all you have to do is open up the strip and I lay my batting in the center and here's a good example you can see it's trimmed down rather than all the way to the edge it takes just a little bit of bulk out of it and then we use my other favorite tool the jelly roll sasher uh, this is the one by Pauline Rogers. Uh, she is in Australia, and she's the one that came up with this fantastic idea. And it's so simple. What I did, I had my batting in there. I folded the sides in, and I didn't measure. I just kind of eyeball it. It looks even. And to get it started... Use my wonder clips and you just start pulling down. I hope you can see that. And you pull down as you go. And then all I have to do now is give it that last fold and it's ready to sew. And I just go in, it's a little less than a quarter of an inch. I just make sure the foot is on the fabric. And here we go, if I can get my foot pedal. Now that's a very slow version of what this machine can do. Let me show you what we can get to get some fabric here because these strips this is the longest tedious part it's just boring but if you're not having to think about what you're doing good Hallmark movie <laughs> there you go and I've watched some really good ones this past couple of weeks and you just move that clip down as you go. That's the thing, it's got a little grip here. Move it down, fold it in. Oh, 
I don't pin, clip, or anything. I just let it sew. And I do that, you need, uh, I'm working with 40 strips. A jelly roll has usually 42. So you can use those to bind it off or in another project. We've got a day full of projects coming up. But you can see, this is what you do. You make these strips. It's kind of like jelly roll spaghetti everywhere. <laughs> My sewing room is full of it. Until you get them all done. All right, our next step is to put our two strips together. And for doing that, I have switched over to, to our sweet little brilliant machine. I love this machine. It's the one I have along with my Solaris, but I love to use this one. It's perfect for just about every job that I do other than embroidery. We would be showing you the beautiful new chorus today, but we sold it and we've got to wait on another one to come in. So I set my stitch width at a 5.0 and my length I moved up to a 2.0. And I have just the regular J foot on. That's all you need. And let me line these up. Again, we're going to put them on the side, the seam side or the side, the stitched edges go together. And again, you don't need to pin clip. You just bump them up beside each other. The settings are at a 5.0 for width, a 2.0 for length, and I'm using the zigzag stitch number six. And here we go. It does make a little noise, but I don't rush it. See how easy that goes together. All right, let's... And I'm going to take this one off because I know you don't mean to bore you with stitching the whole length and show you the next step. And I just kind of give a little tug to sort of straighten it out because they do tend to want to curl. And now what we're going to do is merge the other edges together. The unsewn, I guess you would say. The puffy side. Get it under there. Lower that presser foot. And just like when we put the two together, we're going to put two sets of two. And I don't press it hard, but I do give it just a little bit of a squish there so it will flatten some. And those of you who have um, the Solaris or the Crescendo um, or the Chorus the Ballad, there is a sensor setting in your settings for the fabric so we can um, set that sensor so it can detect the thickness of that fabric <laughs> and okay okay we'll do just a little more and let me take it out and show you oh it's not cutting the bobbin thread and now we have two sets of two together. Now, I'm going to continue this on until I have 10 strips together. 
And once we get 10 strips put together, I'll show you how easy it is to cut them and then make the rail fence. Okay, now let's move on to our next step. We've put our 10 strips together, two strips at a time, then put those two with the other until you have a strip set of 10 pieces. Now, this is all from the same jelly roll, but you can see I got a lot of variation here. Don't worry about it. There's excess at the end. So all we have to do is come down here, straighten up, and you have to give little tugs here and there. It's okay. And I want to open my blade all the way for this. Push that over to the side. And now we're going to cut six and a half inch sections. All right, we've trimmed our edge. And just like when we're straightening our fabric for our quilts, we're going to flip it over because I'm right handed. And we're going to start making sets at six and a half inches. And we're using a six and a half inch square quilter select ruler. There's one. See how easy? And again, just keep giving it little tugs. I've worked on a couple different machines on this, and I think it's trying to tell me something. Whoop. Need to straighten again. And it's, you see how easy this is. Five and six. You need to get six strips. And there we have it. And we have a little extra on the end. So you don't have to worry. Again, like I said, those strip sets, if they're not exactly even, it all comes out. All right, and now we're gonna take those strip sets and we're going to make our rail fence. We have a strip going horizontally, a strip vertically. Horizontal, vertical. And so on and so forth. And then we'll do the same thing. I'm going to zigzag them together. And then we will zigzag both sets together. And that will be half of our rug. We'll do this four times, four sets. And then we just put binding on it. Our rug will be finished and ready for my camper. <laughs> We're almost ready to finish up our jelly roll rug. And if you remember, we were talking about a little bit of a variation. There's oval rugs, there's square rugs, there's rectangular, half circle. There's so many possibilities. So I decided to, why not add one more? And we're doing a rail fence. So as I told you, you Cut your pieces after you have your 10 strips zigzagged together. And this is the last one I was working on. 
You just turn, you alternate. But then the last step is easy. Just like we would bind a quilt, I cut my strips at two and a half inches, folded them in half, pressed them, wrong sides together, and now I'm stitching it down quarter of an inch, and I didn't even worry about my mitered corners like we do when we're doing our quilting and all, because this is so thick. Now you can if you want to, but I found that I think it looks just as neat to have a little bit of a rounded edge. So all I have to do is press it back. I can either stitch in the ditch, which is probably what I'm going to do on this because it will be walked on and I don't want hand stitching to come out. And for that, yes, we definitely want to use our quilt binding foot. Uh, again, this is thick. It was already thick. Now we've added two more layers. So just slow your machine down. Having the quilting foot is going to help with that thickness because of the bi-level under it. And go very slowly. Make sure you've got a heavy duty needle even the 9014s it's a little tough on those i would go ahead to a jean needle for the binding it's just because you're working through so many layers and you go all the way around and stop in the store if you're around tomorrow or we'll probably show it on next week's facebook live but you can see the finished rug before it goes to my camper have a great day.